going on everybody today we are going to be doing a kind of a tutorial video on what to do when um, your ports whoa, let's get focused when your ports 1 or 10 are blown um, not sure if many people are going through this I know I called Vex and I asked them specifically about this question and the guy on the phone um, knew exactly what to do with what I was asking so I specifically just told him that uh, port 1 and 10 were blown and he gave me a solution so I'm going to share that with you guys right now. One of the things that you're going to need is a Y splitter. Um, it looks like this. Okay, it looks like this. Um, it's got, you know, the three prongs on one end, like that. And then on the other end, you have these where motor controllers can actually be plugged into. And then the motor controller goes into the uh, motor. This end would go into the uh, port that actually works in your Cortex. And I'm going to show you an example right now so that way you can see the port doesn't work. And then after we uh, place in the uh, splitter, you'll find that the you get the same amount of distribution with just one port, but you just split it into two. Alright, so now what we have is we have port 10 on this Cortex does not work. Um, for whatever reason, the cortex, or the cortex is not giving the signal for the motor to actually move. So in competition, that doesn't help you. Um, so we want to try to come up with a solution to try to fix it. It's just basically uh, tethered straight to a VEX uh, controller. Um, and then through here, we you know obviously connect the battery just to see if it works. So here we go. So right now he's moving it, it's connected to the analog sections of the joystick and it's not working at all. Um, I mean, we're pressing all of the buttons and then nothing is happening. If you plug it into port 10, or port 1, sorry, and he moves it, you'll see that the motor actually moves. So there's nothing wrong with the motor, it actually works. Um, once again, you plug it into port 10 and you move the joysticks in the program, they're set to be able to move on the analog stick and nothing is helping that. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a port that actually works and then split that port so that uh, it can run off of two motors and not just uh, one. All right, so, as you can see right here, we have it plugged into port two, I believe. And uh, port two has a splitter connected to it that uh, has, as you can see right there, it has two um, motor controllers connected. Now, one thing you gotta remember with connecting motor controllers to extension wires is that the colors have to match in order for it to actually send the correct signal. It's not like uh, putting a motor with a motor controller and then being opposite. Um, it's, the colors have to actually go uh, the same direction. So right here, we have that connected. You can see it right here. There's the splitter. And then here are the two motor controllers right here with the two motors connected to one port. All right. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually test that here. As you saw, it didn't work previously, but you'll see now that both of them should actually work. All right, so here we go. So you can see that one's turning. And you can see that one is turning. And they're giving continuous power throughout the whole entire thing. The power is just being split between the two. So essentially you're getting uh, two motors off of one port. And it's a quick fix if you, know, you run into a jam and at a tournament and you find that port one and port 10 aren't working. Um, if you've packed some splitters inside of your, um, you know, your parts bag or wherever it is that you brought, you can split port any port two through nine 
and uh, get the same result. You might have to do some, obviously, some tweaking in your code, but at least um, you'll have a fully functioning robot throughout the competition. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Oh, my God.